Hello everybody, namaste. Uh, I'm Ben Turner and I'm with the Order of St. Joseph, which is the Holy Order of the Summit Lighthouse. It's uh, 12 minutes to 9 o'clock on September 6th and I'm answering some questions. Um, I just <coughs> heard uh, a recording of Mother from 1988 regarding macrobiotics and health. It's actually, you can do a search for macrobiotics at Ascended Master Library and download um, the information and um, I think, well, 88 must have been at Royal Teton Retreat in Montana, Royal Teton Ranch. She does refer to Colorado Springs as being the previous location, so they were, I think that they were there by, I don't know if that was the first year, I think that they moved there in 86. I think that the ranch in Montana opened up in 86, 1986. And uh, it's, it's very interesting to hear Mother speak of uh, the benefits of macrobiotics because uh, she is so well spoken in so many other spiritual areas. You wonder where all of that energy and inspiration is going to uh, give out. But she uh, speaks um, as if she's been studying Kushi for, you know, a very long time. Uh, so, um, I strongly recommend it. I um, work a lot with, um, in, my, in my own pursuit of macrobiotics and avoidance of the seven deadly nightshades, it was good for me to hear uh, Mother talk about the organs and how uh, the different kinds of uh, grains uh, and macrobiotic foods do correspond the different parts to the body and uh, what sort of uh, elements you know, in, in Japanese thought or in Asian Asian thought, uh, Oriental thought, the different organs have a are, are connected. And I should say, really, with um, in macrobiotic practice, because I think that uh, you know, uh, contemporary unfortunately, contemporary medicine has pervaded a lot of what goes on over there. Uh, with any luck, they're trying to pull back uh, away from you know the dictates, the false uh, teachings that are you know, endemic at this point. But um, she does refer to the grains and how the grains correspond to um, provide vitality and nourish the different organs and also how to uh, ingest your food. She talks about proper etiquette um, uh, during mealtime, not just because uh, it's polite to interact in a certain way and, for instance, not to take too much food, not to take so much food that you're throwing food away, but because it's disruptive to have to um, engage certain kinds of conversations uh, during the meal time, which should be um, inwardly focused for, for 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 the most part. And in America, you know, we find ourselves sitting down with our families in front of very disturbing news reports that are on at dinner time on uh, the at the news hour, which happens to correspond with you know our uh, our dinner time, our, our meal time for the, for the most part. Uh, and so we have to be conscientious, and she teaches about that as well. So it's a good teaching. Um, it's not long at all. It's not difficult to get through. It's I think it's probably th it's actually you download it, and it comes in three different segments. Um, and I uh, really recommend it. And I'm on. Uh, other than that, I'm just on to take a couple of questions and see where where everyone's at. Review of Archangels and Elohim. I know we ought to we ought to be we ought to be doing that. There was a uh, there's a there's a point on the uh, new TSL site where they make a a correction, um, or rather they clarify a common misconception, and that is that Athena is the twin flame to Hilarion, which is not the case. I believe that they that they state that on uh, the AML. If anyone wants to look, I thought that was interesting because it was emerging from material that I had been handling um, a couple of weeks ago. It started to to really uh, emerge into the information, the teaching. Well, where do, where exactly does Athena uh, fit into the, um, the 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 structure of the the Chohan config the Chohan configuration? You know, the different alignment the the, the correspondences of the Chohans to each of the seven chakra rays.
And I'll talk about Athena and Hilarion, uh, who is also embodied as uh, the, the Apostle Paul, um, in, in a bit, and why people are maybe coming to the conclusion that, or, or formulating the false conclusion that um, the two are, are twin flames. I, I'll, I'll take another look at that information. Um, but um, it's uh, important to know that if you do want to download Mother, you know, in the original, and you want to work uh, with her direct teaching to um, the congregation, um, to the you know the various uh, well, it's Church Universal and Triumphant is one giant prayer sangha, effectively. Well, you can go to the Ascended Master Library, which is simply ascendedmasterlibrary.org, all one word, and it's run by the Summit Lighthouse, and you can uh, do searches based upon master, based upon topic, uh, Ch Chohan, Ray, um, era, I believe, that you can go by year and so forth. And it goes back to the 60s with Mark uh, giving dictation and, um, you know, Sunday tapers and all, all, all sorts of uh, different kinds of material, audio uh, recorded material. And you can formulate your own CDs and you can either have them mail you a CD or, um, and this is going to be uh, convenient to a lot of you, you can simply download what you want on MP3 and say, well, I want, you know, six six parts of this particular series or I want the dictation from the Harvest uh, and the Harvest you make the purchase. Get, you download, you know, the material, you'll receive an email and um, it, it will store for you the purchase material there locally so that when you go back in later on, if you discard the, the recording accidentally, you can still download the recordings um, that you selected um, right there from your own personal account. In order to receive an account, it's free to open an account. You just go to ascendedmasterlibrary.org. Actually, first, I believe you have to go to the member area at the new website. Let me just make sure that I'm pointing you directly to um, the new website. Well, if you go to tsl.org, it's going to say new site available, new site now available. So just click through that, and it says access to member area is through login. So you just want to click. You're going to come to our new site, and you can tell because that it's the new site, because the splash page has a different art direction. Um, and it's going to say teachings of the Ascended Masters at the top of the page, Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet. And there's a picture of mother with the causal body rings around her. Uh, and at that point, you're going to be at summitlighthouse.org. What you want to do at this point is go to login. And if you don't have login information, this is how it works. If you don't have login information, it, it will um, give you the opportunity to start a an account. Just follow, just really follow your nose as you would with any website, you know, if you're a first-time subscriber. Um, if it's not off this page, you'll find it. Um, and actually, you might want to use www.tslnnovember.org, but you can really click through from new site now available, which is summitlighthouse.org. And again, that's with the new art direction and teachings of the Ascended Masters at the top. Uh, go either to login or home, possibly. Trying to see if I can volunteers request info. Well, if you want to request information, at the at the bottom of the page, they will send you an opening packet. But when I received my introductory packet, it was I think it was in 2011, possibly 2012. It was actually two free CDs that I received in the mail of Mother um, delivering um, a teaching on how to receive more love that was made in San Francisco, I believe, in 1997 or 96. Um, and, you know, one of the prayer cards and a bunch of information. Uh, so there's a, a place for you to go ahead, you know, to proceed with ordering your introductory material there uh, at the bottom of the page. Then uh, there's also a place, and it says Pearls of Wisdom, if you want to sign up to receive Pearls of Wisdom, uh, you can click through there. You'll you'll get the El Moria Introductory 16. For those of you who are newer, El Moria is the 
the Chohan of the first ray, um, which is the throat chakra, it's the bl blue uh, ray, and uh, was also embodied as King Arthur, um, Thomas More, uh, the poet, Thomas More, the philosopher, two different Thomas Mores, um, and many, many other uh, masters. So, um, start off with the El Moria 16, but you will also get the new pearls as they're released. And uh, some people uh, will want to order the pearls in paper format. The pearls downloaded online are fantastic because they're PDFs um, and they're, the quality is, is stupendous. Um, I don't think that I'm uh, exaggerating. Um, it, they're very, they're, they're excellently edited and, and curated. And you will also get a link when you get the free online ePearls. Uh, there will be a link to, I think we're calling it the subscriber library now. It's not the full information that you would get at Ascended Master Library at, at the AML online, or rather it's not every last pearl, but it might be the case that all of the pearls are searchable online at the new website www.summitlighthouse.org. You'll have to take a look look for that. But in any event, you'll get the new pearls as they're released, um, and then you can go back and and you know get last year's pearls if you want to find those and download those printed pearls of wisdom. Right. So mo monthly mailings. They will alert you to conferences and seminars as they're um, as those become available. There's also a Rosary Novena to the Immaculate Heart. Which is available on MP3 CDs. And um, this I'm not sure, condemnation of marijuana or let's see what they're saying. Um, I know that there's a link to Inner Perspectives on the new website, which is also an excellent series, but it's an interview format, one-on-one -on -one interview format with Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Family Designs for the Golden Age um, consists of stumping and mother delivering teaching and lectures on various uh, topics. And the mother wanted us to formulate our own conclusions and she taught that frequently. But with respect to marijuana, um, I know that she has taught, you know, o over the course of 20 or 30 years at different points in her um, presentations, she would say, in order to cleanse your body of marijuana use or past reliance on drugs and that sort of thing, um, as if you know, people were using marijuana at the time and that it was okay to step away from marijuana and that she was encouraging people to do that. But I've never heard her issue a blanket condemnation. At least her teachings are such that many of them, I'm not saying that maybe a dictation at some point uh, didn't come to include information that was um, perhaps critical of uh, marijuana or marijuana use. But generally speaking, um, she taught that drugs can be cleansed from the body. But I, ne but I never, and I probably heard her say that, you know, with respect to marijuana, I think I've heard her say that three or four times. But it was almost as if periodically people were, in fact, smoking pot and using marijuana in the congregation, and that if they wanted to turn away from it, this is the way in which to turn away from uh, that particular reliance on that particular substance. So it's, it's important to take everything um, in context. I'll give you another example of this. If you go to the that newest that new teaching that I just uh, presented to you, which is Mother and which is downloadable from the Ascended Master Library, um, Mother will, and this is the material with respect to macrobiotic living, and again, excellent, and very detailed. Um, Mother says, you know, when I go into a pizza pizza parlor, it's difficult for me to eat and to focus because you're not eating good food. Everybody is competing for attention. It's loud and there's rock music playing in the background, so it's distracting. 
Um, and uh, some of you might be aware, Mother has taught against rock music or used rock music as a metaphor for uh, different kinds of uh, evil to avoid, uh, evil based in um, certain rhythmic patterns that uh, overtake um, the body and so forth. And it is appropriate to use meta metaphoric language, but she never said, you know, if you ever listen to rock music, um, you're never, you're, you're not welcome in the church. I mean, she wasn't that, it's not uh, fire and brimstone uh, to that extent. And in this instance, you know, she does say, and it's uh, on the occasions where people choose to take their children into a pizza restaurant that's playing rock music and so forth, um, then they're, they're making that choice for that moment. But she's not condemning it to the point at which um, it's entirely impossible for anyone in Church Universal and Triumphant to be um, a good Sangha member and listen to rock music and, and and listen to rock music at the same time. She never said it's it's us or rock music. It's that rock music, as I've taught in my own uh, teachings here, can inter interfere in certain kind kinds of pranic rhythms. And if you're trying to be prayerful, and if you're uh, doing yoga or maintaining certain states of yogic elevation. Uh, throughout your day, um, then stopping what you're doing and listening to rock music may um, detract from your work, and you don't want that to happen. So it's important, um, you know, when I read condemnations of marijuana usage and, and addiction and so forth, I understand um, that some people want to step back from reliance on substances, and it should be a choice to be able to disconnect from uh, from substances, but I think that it's important to take the teaching in context and to understand um, the manner in which and understand mother's expectations. Because if we, I think that um, if we don't put it into context, that we can come to the conclusion that life within Church Universal and Triumphant, life within holy orders is exclusionary and difficult to navigate and never fun and so forth. And I don't think that it has to be an all or nothing approach. And I think that I speak for a lot of people at the church as well. Um, at one point, Open Door, and I think Open Door is great, and Open Door is great for a couple of reasons, but one of the reasons is that it will Open Door will give us clips, lengthy clips, generous clips of mother stumping that are, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes long. Mother will be speaking about the mystery school that was Eden um, and Jesus' reign as high king and all of this very interesting, powerful um, in, 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 in for information, galvanizing information. Uh, and so they're valuable for that. But I think periodically people at the church might feel inspired um, in the wrong direction. And I think that if we go in and we look at the, 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 the dictation, the dictation comes from masters under certain circumstances. When that information is coming through, um, it has to penetrate you know, this sphere of embodiment. It has to come through into the, the lower bodies that mesh with the physical. And it's, I think that sometimes information can be qualified in a certain way. It doesn't mean that it's not holy information. And periodically, the masters will give us information that is important at that moment and that the congregation needs to hear or someone in the congregation needs to hear um, certain kinds of information. And again, some of that is metaphoric. So, and I, and I, I, I give that as a preface, preface because you know, mother, mother is teaching macrobiotics. She doesn't spend a lot of time hailing the miracle of modern medicine, certainly. She was raised a Christian scientist. Mary Baker Eddy is an ascended master in our church. So the proper approach is to consider that we are skeptical of modern medical science and skeptical of some of that information that is not based in spirit and that is not God-directed necessarily. I work for, you know, I do human rights consulting and I'm a witness to a lot of abuses within the healthcare system. So I think that um, we need to keep a healthy distance. And the reason I set this up and the reason I am presenting this information as a preface is because I heard when I think when I read this about marijuana, 
I think it sort of it lends the impression that we're oh more socially conservative than maybe we really are, and I think that it's okay to um, have certain ideals. And certainly, I support um, a, a, the church sharing. Uh, sacred art and sharing certain sorts of spir spiritual practices and reinforcing which is, those and, practices. And generally speaking, the, the site is just really incredible and very accurate. And particularly and when you go into Ascended Master Library, um, you know, hear it from the horse's mouth. I mean, hear it from the prophet, the living guru, um, and listen to her material. Um, what I heard that I thought should be taken with a grain of salt was that um, on one of the radio shows within the last I think it was one of the last three or four releases from Open Door, one of the people at the church saying that the Ascended Masters want us to continue with health care or want us to... Um, the, he was talking about spiritual health, and of course spiritual health integrates a lot of different components, um, but he had, he had to... He felt the need to um, inject this uh, caveat that, um, well, let's not reject... Um, modern medical uh, healthcare practices because the ascended masters aren't saying that we don't need to see doctors. Well, that's not accurate information um, for a couple of different reasons. And one of three principal reasons one is if that material, if that material came out uh, in a dictation, if the masters at some point said uh, we need to, to have you know, we need to follow occult science and spiritual science, um, and we need to understand um, the chart of the divine self and how to draw down the Dharmakaya. And yet, let's be sure not to draw away from modern medical science. If that um, has ever been said, I don't think that that, uh, that information was applicable beyond that particular point in time. If it came out, it could have been a, an erroneous information that Mother was delivering. Again, it's not that it's not sacred information. It's that, depending upon the context, the masters aren't receiving a perfect... The, the information has to come down into this dimension and, and into this octave. And so it's not always perfectly transmitted. So it could have been information that was received, that was being qualified by a, a slightly off-track ray, for instance. Um, but... Um, so, and, and I don't, I don't believe, I think that churches are in their practice nowadays of saying, uh, of doing that, of trying to say, and, and, but not just churches, uh, health food stores, for instance, will often put up signs or so forth. And sometimes I think there's legislation that is, uh, coming through a very dark part of the veil, uh, and that it should not be, that should not be permitted that says, Never tell people that they can cure themselves with herbs. Only tell people that they can interact with doctors. Well, it's not true, A. Kushi himself has said that um, people have cleared their bodies of that which has been called cancer in its entirety when doctors couldn't do it. Um, and, I mean, I don't... I like to call it that which has been called cancer because I don't believe in uh, utilizing that language. I don't believe that we should be, we should be following um, uh, the medical model that tries to keep us sick by uh, ladening our lives with this abusive discourse. But people can cure themselves of dis-ease and what appears to ail them entirely through macrobiotics, macrobiotics and yoga. It's the Christian science practice. It's what Mary Baker Eddy taught. So for us to feel compelled, I think it's inappropriate for us to feel compelled to say, and by the way, be sure to see your doctor. Because it sounds like, well, we don't really believe that, but we don't want to get sued, so we're going to um, we're going to use that as the that'll be the additional information that we tack on um, to any sort of reference to healing yourself with spiritual science. Also, and I, I don't think it's appropriate to say that because we're not legally bound to 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 say that, and also. We're going to get people are going to get sued, or people are going to be upset that we're giving them false information when they we tell them to go to doctors and they're subjected to medical abuse, which is very prominent in the country right now. I'm a I'm a witness in in four different court cases um, that cite as much and com and provide very compelling information 
um, and are trying to make their way into the international human rights courts. So to say to people, yeah, make sure to keep seeing a doctor, uh, even though that's not really what people need to do, um, people really do need uh, meditation and yoga and macrobiotic living or proper eating habits in order to be healthy and well. Um, it was taught by Mary Baker Eddy, uh, who is the goddess of wisdom and uh, mother and so forth. So I, I think that we need to be careful um, and not feeling obligated uh, towards, uh, not feeling obligated uh, to pander. And I think that having to say, be sure to see a doctor in spite of our advice that really it's God that heals. I think that that's, we're not doing anybody a, a, a service at all. Um, so I wanted to get that information across. And I'm not criticizing, you know, individual people, but I think that that practice doesn't belong. That sort of um, the, 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 the aside, the, the sort of perennial aside that, I'm saying that you can heal yourself with light, you can heal yourself with food and meditation and yoga, but don't forget to see your doctor for regular checkups. Well, you're going to get sued um, when people get uh, injured by that or when people, not necessarily sued in court, but we're, going, we're not doing anybody a favor because our healthcare system is such a, an atrocious nightmare right now and it's being destroyed. It, I mean, healthcare is allopathic medicine. It is inherently dangerous. And as you know, the, the functioning parts of the UN accurately uh, state it is tantamount to torture. So I don't think it's appropriate that we have to say, you know, but take your vitamins, see your doctor, and that sort of thing. Um, that's not really part of the teaching. Um, let's see, what else are we looking at here? Okay, the role of entities in addiction. We do teach that. I've seen that in the pearls, and I've talked about that elsewhere. Raphael is the archangel of the third eye, the fifth ray. He is the healing angel um, and is depicted often with fish and a staff. Michael, of course, is depicted with scales and a sword. Uriel has a flame of light in the palm of his hand and Gabriel uh, as the um, angel of the Annunciation uh, bears a lily and a trumpet, a horn. Raphael's third eye, uh, his archaea is beloved Mary the mother of Christ. Okay. So everybody absolutely support the church, go to Ascended Master Library, and so forth. But if you're collecting material and you want to study on your own, you can't afford the, the cough lessons, um, then you know definitely listen to Inner Perspectives, Family Designs for the Golden Age, and uh, Open Door um, to the extent that you're uh, able to locate them and, and find them. Well, you should be able to locate them on iTunes. And it says it here, unquestioning belief can sometimes get in the way of a clear examination of truth. This is at the mystery and mission of Jesus. Um, if you go to tsl.org forward slash 2014 forward slash 04 for forward slash mystery dash mission dash of dash Jesus forward slash. You're going to come to this, see how long the segment is. It's an hour long uh, Open Door episode. And there's a link to iTunes at the bottom so you can download whatever you want from Open Door for free. I'll include a link to this um, when I publish this particular teaching at YouTube.
Uriel is the uh, archangel of the sixth ray, which is ruled by Lady Master Nada, um, and his archaea is Aurora. Um, and then Gabriel is, of course, the archangel of the fourth ray, the root root ray, the ray of the mother. His archaea is Hope. Michael is the Michael and Faith are the archangel and archaea of the first ray, the throat chakra. Those are the four. I mean, there are seven archangels in our system. Um, in Roman Catholicism, there are really three plus Uriel. Um, I don't believe Uriel is mentioned by name in the canonical Bible. Um, I think he's mentioned in the book of Enoch. Raphael appears in the book of, I want to say the book of Tobit. Okay, um, I had this in from this, this before. I believe that Jesus moved to Office of the World Teacher. I think that was in 1954. And to the best of my knowledge, that's that was, I think that was Lotus. It could have been Geraldine in the center, though. As late as 54 would have been Geraldine in the center. But I will check on that and get back to you. Here's an example. Uh, this is from Family Designs for the Golden Age. You will earnestly apply to the hierarchies of light to give you the impression of God consciousness that will show you what it is you are to do. Prince of the House of Rakazi. That's how Mother pronounced it, Rakazi. Master R is a cosmic being. He founded that house and retreat in Transylvania where St. Germain is an initiate. Okay, and there's a god and goddess Maru prayer in the teaching to which I referred earlier that contains information about macrobiotics. They were among the masters of illumination. And we ought to learn it because it streamlines uh, the relay of information. Okay, Cyclopeia has called it 144 times for the exposure of the Fatima secret. Mother ta taught on this specifically in a dictation at Cor Corwin Springs in 1997. I'll, I'll talk about that about sacred art down the line. I explained sacred art in another recording. Um, it's a very important principle, um, and I, I don't want people, but I don't want people who are still, you know, chilas ought to be able to follow their own path. I think at a certain point in your chilaship at Church Universal and Triumphant, um, if you, you know, and you choose the path that you choose, and, and you choose those um, components of mysticism that are um, and relevant that speaks to, you. to your heart and so forth. So not everybody, you know, some people are going to be drawn towards the Buddhist. Um, teachings more so than the Christian teachings and so forth, and that's that's perfectly fine. But I think that um, you know I, I will teach more about it down the line. Again, a lot of our teachings are very, we're very much um, like the Essene Jews. We have a specific teaching, um, and there are specific practices you know that we follow. And I think people derive a benefit when you're dedicated. It's not simply that you're trying to prove to God or or whatnot, you're you're trying to to um, pursue the path of the yogi. Um, you're in, in adoration of the mother flame, and you're seeking, you know, seeking union with God. And um, mm -hmm. there are um, goals that are facilitated by adherence to certain spiritual practices. It's part of the alchemy. And people, I mean, people who are established will know this already. But I think that it's important for people who are trying to grasp what it is that, how it is that we pursue the alchemy, um, the, 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 the application of these spiritual principles as they were taught by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, handed down through her dispensation, and understood by people who are at a certain level of attainment within um, the church and within holy orders. Um, it's not simply, as, as Mother said, it's not simply that it's positive thinking, it's that God is in you, and that provides a certain sort of... Um, you're able to help um, the presence of God within you um, advance your 
understanding of the unfoldment of the alchemy. Um, and uh, it's, it, the changes will occur in your life when you apply the principles that are detectable to you. So it's not simply, um, it's positive thinking to be in church universal and triumphant. I'm saying this more for people exterior to the church and more for light bearers and so forth and new chilas who are trying to come into the church. The alchemy yields very specific results and the teachings are specific, but certain practices are followed um, so that we're, uh, we all stay guided on, if not the same path, we all each have a deep, we all pursue our own unique path, um, but we help each other along by um, sharing certain practices. And I will definitely talk about that in more detail. This is good information for those of you who collect the Dharma, as I do, in palatable, smaller bites. Uh, I think there's a benefit to studying passages from the teaching, um, uh, as opposed to trying to absorb the, as opposed to trying to trying to absorb it in book length form. Um, something called the Office of the Vicar of Christ, which is the Office of the Representative of Christ, okay? Which was, and this was passed to Mother in the fall of 1972. Remember, Mother was also the... Um, I'll find her exact title, her exact exact office, but this particular, um, I suppose, banner or moniker is in addition to um, some other um, some other titles that Mother held. The office of the Vicar of Christ is one of those titles, and the full sentence that I recorded here is: "The office of the Vicar of Christ is the office of the representative of Christ." Office. This office was passed to Mother in the fall of 1972. Um, and I believe that when she was 18, this is another recording, when she was 18 she had a perception of Christian science, I referred to Christian science earlier, earlier that came from her own, that came from my own inner union with God. Portia gave a dictation that the office was to be held by mother, the office of the Vicar of Christ. Guru Mag kept it a secret until 1973, I believe she knew for a year. It was vested in the Mother of the Flame. That's the other um, title, Mother's uh, other office. She is the Mother of the Flame. Uh, was the Mother of the Flame. I, I personally believe that she's Mother Regent now the Office of the Vicar of Christ and the Office of the Mother of the Flame were held um, by Mother at the same time. Right, and it was vested in the Mother of the Flame. The Office of the Vicar of, of Christ was vested in the Mother of the Flame by Jesus and the Knight Commander. 8% of karma is required of the avatars in order for them to remain on earth, on earth. This is critical um, to the alchemy. Um, had mother fully balanced her karma, she would no longer have been in embodiment. You have to maintain, in order to be in embodiment, you have to have 8% uh, of karma. So 51% you can make your ascension, but you have to maintain 8% in order to be uh, an embodiment as an avatar. Otherwise, you're no longer on the earth. And then there's information about Babaji that's trying to come through.
Well, no, they never said that. That's uh, they they didn't say. Mother never condemned all psychics. I mean, there's at least one book. She didn't. She's not a psychic. The dispensa or the her her she she provided dictation through her mantelist messenger. That's not the same thing as channeling the dead, which she t she did teach that that was unlawful. But there's at least one book in which Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet state that the world is better off with psychics but it's not um, it's not lawful uh, elsewhere mother taught it's not lawful to channel the dead and she herself um, is not it's a psychic people who are exterior to the church and who are exploring chileship for the first time I think if you just sit, see a book by Elizabeth Clare Prophet on the book sh bookshelf at I, I'm not sure it shouldn't be categorized that way um, I, I not and I'm not just I'm not trying to discredit anybody um, it's that certain books are more strictly about astrology, and Mother did write extensively and taught extensively about astrology, and astrology is part of our dharma, and she but, makes that um, distinction, she, you know, multiple times throughout um, her teaching. But it's, again, when we talk about information that maybe people have taken in a certain direction in the church, it's, uh, you know, we don't say that Mother was an psychic because um, if she was a messenger... Um, but to say that, you know, the prophets condemned all psychics is not accurate. That's not accurate information because they do write about it. And I, I can find the reference for you folks at some point um, if it's of use to you. But I mean, even at one point they said the world is probably better off or communities have been aided by that sort of inquiry and by those sorts of gifts. Um, but she doesn't speak on behalf of psychics. That's not um, her that's not her role. She, and and so, um, I wanted to add that clarification because we were having that conversation before. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I have taught about Anankiel already, and I have taught about Enoch chapter 50, verse 4. And Jesus is high king under the sign of cancer, 17 ages previous to our own. If you want to hear a description of Clara Louise passing the ring the Elmoria ring, which is a three diamond ring, to Elizabeth Clare Prophet, that is discussed on the third recording of Family Designs for the Golden Age. And I believe that that's how the dispensation changes is that mother will pass the Elmoria ring. And it, that, that I believe that that's in the process of occurring. As part of her ascension, which makes mother, which would make mother, mother regent, as Clara Louise was mother regent, became mother regent upon passing the ring. And I will look at that uh, very closely because I want to make sure that I, I have all of that. I, I want to make sure that I understand the succession very clearly. So I will return to that information. I'm trying to think, what well, was Clara Louise was the mother, mother regent. I suppose at one point, Clara Louise, for that to be true, Clara Louise would have had to have been the mother of the flame. And I think that she was at a point the mother of the flame for the keepers of the flame. But I will look at that and I will verify that information. And another thing, when we're talking about Jesus and, and Jesus having balanced all of his karma, when I make that um, disclosure, also bear in mind, Jesus had the perfect balance of love, wisdom, power. So the threefold flame, which is the threefold flame in the heart, um, 
and is also depicted um, by the fleur de lis. That was Jesus's one of Jesus's accomplishments as a as a living master. Oh, well, as an avatar, and as uh, an individual who walked the perfect path of Christhood. And again, in talking about science from before and me medicine, my my um, rejoinder to the insistence upon catering to the medical community, well, a study in Christhood, I believe that this comes from volume 27, number 52, Beloved Jesus, El Moria, and El Moria, October 28, 1984. They, re they refer to unknown misuses of the laws of science or health or medical treatment. So what I do for work, which is protect people from mental health capacity determinations and trying to shut that down, it's important that we, re we continue to engage that part of the discourse. Not just divine alchemy can heal the body, but remember to see your doctor for your regular liver checkup. Um, not that model of communicating how it is that we need to be integrated, but rather a model that is properly suspicious and critical of the misuses of healing that is not God-directed. I think that's, that's enormously important. Right, Mother states the following, I had lost a certain idealism I had had about the UN and world leaders. I know where she's at on that. That is for certain. At Mark's ascension, I had this question the other day, and Kat was back on asking about it. Last dictation was at the Santa Barbara Mother House in California. Mark's ascension occurred on February 26, 1973. Um, someone had a name. It was something like the name of a drink. It sounded like the name of a cocktail, like Tom Collins, or it was a, a, a proper name. That's also the name of a drink, and I don't remember exactly what. I think it was something like that. Um, it's uh, 226.73 is your answer. And the church, another person was asking, the founding of the church, Washington TSL, Mark founded TSL in D.C. in 1957. CUT was established, C.U.T. rather, was established in Okay, I'm back to the point. I'm I'm at a point where I feel like I feel that I should stop, and um, we will remain prayerful. I still owe a recitation of the Rosary, and I will share that with you folks as soon as I complete it. Namaste. Thank you very much for uh, being here, and um, people uh, can feel free to write to me with questions. I will post my um, email at the end of this recording. Peace. Thank you so much for listening, and um, let me know if I can help out in any way. Take care.